all new Sacktab. Sacktab. <laughs> Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again with another video. Uh, you probably guessed from the title of this video what I'm doing, but you probably aren't really aware of what this is on the floor. This is actually a piece of hardware I'm going to need to uh, make this Class D amplifier project work in a rack case. So, from what we can see, it looks like a fairly light box wrapped in bubble wrap, marked Fragili, and uh, says top load only. Well, I know what it is. You guys don't have a clue what it is. So let's stop talking about it and let's open the package. So I'm just going to go gung-ho, balls and all, straight through the bubble wrap like that. And we have another piece of bubble, bubble wrap. Now, it says on this Econ panel, ISO 9001, colon 2000, and glossy. However, we're still not anywhere closer to figuring out what this actually is, although it's a panel. Well, I'm a little confused because this is supposed to be a sheet of 3mm thick aluminium. Well, it's definitely 3mm thick, but that's plastic, that's acrylic. Uh, I believe I have been ripped off. Well, I'm slightly pissed off now because that should be aluminium. This is, this is fucking plastic. So what we got here is uh, something called Econ Panel. And it's ISO 9001 colon 2000 and glossy. Now this stuff is used for making signs. And I was going to use it for the sub chassis if you like to mount the transformers and the power amplifier modules and stuff on it. Unfortunately, it's a composite. There's a, what looks like a plastic substrate on the uh, middle here with two very thin, probably 0.1, 0.2 of a millimetre thick aluminium sheets glued on top of it. And there is quite a bit of flex in it. So you might as well just call this either a carbon composite or a plastic composite. Uh, and it's not really electrically conductive. So as a chassis to have grounding on as well, it's not going to work. So that means that that piece of material is absolutely useless this project um, and I'm not impressed I should have really read the eBay article a little bit more in depth before ordering it um, I'll use it for something later maybe I'm not sure but it's not going to be used for this project so I had to solve a problem aluminum do 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 aluminum do 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 aluminum do 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 Aluminum, no. Uh, <laughs> this is three millimeter thick aluminium or aluminum, um, and it's 410 long by 300 uh, high or wide or deep, whatever. Um, and this is perfect for what I need, and it's actually the correct size to fit in the bottom of a rack case. I've measured it uh, for the bars that it's got to mount to, and I need 410 long and the case's depth is like 335 or something. So I'll let it at 300 so there's a bit of wiggle room there back and forth. But this is perfect because it will not flex or bend. Have a good, good, good luck trying to bend that. Um, so I don't have to do any cutting. So let, let's face it, most of us when we're doing construction projects like this are fucking lazy. We, we, if we can get stuff already pre-manufactured or fabricated to the correct size that we need without having to do too much cutting ah all well and good however if this was a larger sheet of aluminium 
um, I would have just cut it with a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade in it and be done with it and just mount a piece of wood across it there for a straight edge to run up against. But uh, because it's already cut to the size I need, I don't have to do jack shit. So I'm happy. Now this cost me, for the whole entire sheet that you see here, $27.50. That's including GST. I got it from a place called Weatherfoil PTY Limited here in Tasmania. Um, there's their details if you want to contact them. But they're very helpful. They'll cut it the size for you. And uh, yeah, you just got to pay for it really. Um, see, there's the total price including GST. So it is kind of expensive, but it's good quality. Sack tap. Sack tap, sack tap, sack tap, sack tap. All new sack tap. Okay, so I got these two uh, sub rails, mounting rails, left over from that guitar amplifier rack case that I used. And the rack case that I've ordered uses the same rails. Now, the reason why I want to use these is because on one side, we actually have threaded holes, one there, one in the center, and one at the other end. And it's only on one side is there threaded holes. The rest are all straight through. So, in order to mount this into the chassis, I would be doing something like that, but of course on the other side. And uh, screw it to my end uh, uh, points here on the rail and one in the center. On to the next problem. My sack tap. Sack tap, sack tap. Oh, new sack tap. Actually, I'm wearing a wireless headset right now, so that makes shit a lot easier to do at the moment. I'll grab all the circuit boards I need. Play with my dick. No, I, I play with my dick way too much. In fact, if I keep playing with it, it's going to fall off. Um, all right, so with the... Um, circuit boards roughly where they need to be or where I'm planning on putting them so I've got plenty of room over here for the transformer well there's actually two of them I've got a little bit of an issue I can't mount two of these power amplifiers that's the wrong way around anyway I can't mount two of these power amplifiers long ways um, they're not going to fit the only thing I solution I can come up with is to mount them ver uh, yeah, 90 degrees around like that one there one there probably somewhere close to the middle so they both sit roughly in the middle um, power supply left where it is and the speaker protector where it is uh, it's about the only solution I could, can come up with I'll actually maybe move this further forward but I've also got to be careful because I've got to be able to put in my own input selector board here at the back and that's going to stick out a fair way in, so there's got to be clearance between that edge and the heatsink. The selector switch with the knob on it at the front is going to be mounted uh, vertically against the inner sub panel. Um, and so there's got to be clearance to that as well. So that would be as much as I can move that because it's going to be a board directly right here. So I really need to wait for the, the uh, rack case to come in so I can then, you know, place this piece of aluminium in the chassis, drill its holes to mount it to the rails, mount it in the um, case to the sides with the sub panel on, just so I can get a, you know, sort of reference here. And there's also going to be two other circuit boards here mounted horizontally that need clearance as well. That's the preamp and tone amp. Uh, respectively and there's uh, another little smaller board here with the volume control on it that's also got to have clearance to this relay but for all intents and purposes this power supply can and that board can go right up the back well out the way and there's still room here for a large toroidal transformer a smaller toroidal, toroidal transformer for the 15 0 15 volt rail uh, bridge rectifier for the high side etc and an earth point and there's still plenty of clearance at least up until this point for the preamplification um, stuff uh, volume board will be sitting in the middle of the front panel and it's a three unit high case so it's uh, 
120 high, so it'll be somewhere around about 60 millimetre mark where the board is sitting, so that will be sitting up in the air. So that should clear the top of one of these circuit boards just nicely. Uh, but yeah, mounting it um, in this orientation is about the only way I'm going to solve the issue. Uh, I've yet to make up another the other circuit board. It's still sitting in kit form. I'm just lazy, as I've said plenty of times. But um, that's the plan for that. And this is what I have to do is work it out physically and work it out on paper what I'm doing so I don't mess it up because this being an expensive sheet of aluminium I don't want to have to go and get another one and speaking of my input selector I've got a already board made up which is the one I was testing before and well I've got to make a modification to it it's slightly longer than this one but the actual height we'll call it is the same that hasn't changed so that's going to have to mount up the back here somewhere and judging from what I can see I've got all of about 15 millimeters to play with between this heatsink and the back panel because remember this piece of uh, aluminium is going to be sitting in the bottom of the rack case uh, in the front to back uh, direction somewhere in the middle of the case so there'll be about 15 millimeters at the front and 15 millimeters at the back roughly maybe 20 but we'll say 17 and a half as an outside figure just to you know cover all bases so i've got to be very very careful where things mount it's the power amps are the most challenging part at the moment but uh, the old saying is it should work out in the in the wash um just one other thing where this input connector is it's kind of in close proximity to the power supply so i'd never get an rca plug into there i'd have to use the one that's standing upright which is probably a better idea anyway but yeah but that's that's the plan that's what i intend to do um I've got to make up a new input selector board with the uh, modifications. I've got to make up, I actually got to route and make up a preamplifier board, tone amp. I've also got to route and make up a headphone amplifier board, which sits under the preamp vertically, uh, which also includes an ELF or extremely low frequency, which is a trademark by the way, or EAS, electronically assisted subwoofer preamp because this is going to be a 2.1 um, system it just has um, an active sub output so that means you'd have to plug that output into a powered sub um, because it's just simply not enough room to add an extra power amp but that that also gives you more choices of uh, the amount of power your subwoofer is um, because these are 150 watt modules you really want probably a 300 watt sub minimum I've only got like a 70 watt sub but yeah whatever anyway that's the progress so far um, I've done nothing all day except talk about it and haven't actually presented any material this video is going to be shot in several parts during its construction this is going to be my last major construction project so uh, I hope you're going to follow along and enjoy this um, as much as I'm going to be frustrated and enjoy it, making it. But I got before I can go on, I need the rack case and my transformers. So I've already ordered it. That's like 306 bucks worth of order from Ultronics, um, just so I can get some sort of visual. Uh, reference here. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about this because it's just going on and on about nothing and I'm not getting anything done. So uh, let's move on to the next stage, which is looking at what this looks like mounted in the case and where everything is going to be physically placed. <laughs>